everybody. Welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. Today we're going to be talking to Lisa Broderick and we're talking about her book, um, All the Time in the World. Um, so I just cannot wait to talk about your, your book. <laughs> it's so exciting, particularly during um, this period where right now we're talking during this kind of Thanksgiving time and mm -hmm. It feels like what has happened with is that time just sped up. Everyone I talk to is out of time, rushed when they're speaking, in the sense of like impending holiday craziness happening is kind of flowing into all the conversations. And sure. And it's hard not to be fall prey to all of that. So I wanted to first talk off about talk about that and um, I'm sure this relates to topics in your book. Well, it does. Because time is the most, uh, let's say, familiar aspect of our lives, in a sense. And the thing we know the least about, what is time? Why does time exist? Is time real? Is time an illusion? Einstein said time was an illusion. So all of the, the harriedness and the hurriedness and the holidays, what is that? Is it real or, or is it a projection? That's what this book explores. And then it takes it one step further. Does how we show up every moment affect our experience of reality in particular time? Mm -hmm. That's what we want to know. Because if that's yeah. true, let's change the part of the equation we can change. Let's mm -hmm. show up the way we want to show up. Mm -hmm. So in terms of, is it real or is it a projection? I mean, how, what? so you walked in with this kind of query of like, is it real? Is it rejection? I mean, what are your answers after exploring this topic? <laughs> well, it comes from a lifetime of thinking about time. As a little girl, I discovered I had a, a superpower. I'll just call it that. And that is I had a, a, an ability to slow down time. Mm -hmm. I could slow down like the track and field, uh, you know, games when I was playing that. And I would have dreams about slow down time. It seemed to come out of an experience I had prior to that where I had a death experience. People call them a near death experience. Mine was sort of more than that, but I came back and I lived, obviously I'm here. And uh, after that, I, re I realized I had this special relationship with time. And I started to wonder if I'm dreaming about slow down time, is that, is that real? What is real? And I grew up as a little girl, but I had many, many experiences of the zone, which are now very common in athletics, right? Athletes are taught to slow down the field, Olympic athletes and athletes in team sports, where literally they slow down the field so it's so slow they can pick every shot, mm. they can get over the high bar, they can do all these things. Well, what's really going on there? Is that a trick of the mind? So I began to dive into it. As a, as a young person, I began to meditate in my 20s, which helped as well because to calm the mind that much allows you to focus. And I realized that time is really interesting when you meditate. You could be gone for an hour and think you're gone for a minute. What's up with that? So the whole relationship with time. And then later on, I discovered science, quantum mechanics. I was given a book called The, the Tao of Physics, in, which was written in the 70s. So when I was in high school, and it, decided, it began to relate for me all these experiences I was having to ancient traditions from China, from India, from, uh, from Kabbalah, from ancient Judaism, all of the ancient sort of mystical practices, they had thoughts about time as well. Mm -hmm. So to relate all of them together to my life experience was something that I wanted to do and the book is the result. Mm. So, the t so time is yet a projection because if I feel like a minute has passed in meditation and an hour has passed or vice versa. Um, <laughs> it means that our, our perception of time is, is somehow related to us. And that's what you were saying before, if we can it actually. Is. So how, what's the relationship? So when you're an athlete and time slows down to the point that you can control the field of, of, and I don't even know the field of what you meant, like track and field or track field, and field you know, the, well, yes, no, not a metaphysical field, a track and field, the field that you're running on the, the basketball court, the soccer court, the golf, you know, the golf course, all of these fields where games are played, people are athletes are taught to slow down those fields in order to perform more superbly. Mm. And they're able to, and it's not a trick of the mind. It's actually well known. But there is something, CJ, that we have to take into account. And that is, so why does time exist? I've thought about that. 
And the reason, one reason it exists is because things move. Mm. Things move around. There's a physical component to time. We know it's day and night because the earth is rotating. The earth is then going around the sun. So there's seasons, all these different things happen. Mm. If you were in a room with no light and no movement, you wouldn't sense time passing. Somewhere time might be passing, but if there was no movement anywhere in the universe, there's no time. So time and movement change are related. That's number one, mm -hmm. but it doesn't govern everything because as we just talked about, what about our perceptions? Mm -hmm. So time is a two-part equation. It's one part physical movement mm -hmm. and it's one part perception mm -hmm. because we control the perception part with our minds. We have a lot to say in how we experience time. Mm -hmm. And that's what the book explains. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's break it down for the two examples that you've given. One is the the athlete that's mm -hmm. able to slow down time. Um, and it's probably the same as, I'm not even sure exactly if it's the same or not than the meditator who does that. Do you find it as similar kinds of things or different things? I do, because the book delves into, so why does this happen? And in, in the book are many stories, my own stories and other people's stories of in particular slowed down time. And so slow down time very often occurs for people in grave danger. Don Miguel Ruiz so generously wrote the foreword to the book and writes a story about being in medical school in Mexico City when he was in a young man and being in a terrible car crash and being able to move his own torso out of the way of the steering column so he did not die, mm -hmm. all in slow motion. And that changed him forever. Many, many stories are like this. In fact, time slips where people are just transported to a different place during a terrible auto accident and suddenly they're in a different place and they keep driving like nothing happens. So something's going on, right? I believe it's a brainwave state and the brainwave state is akin to meditation. Mm. And that's what I explain in the book. Anybody can achieve this if you know the brainwave states and you do some practices that are like meditation. I call it focused perception, mm -hmm. but are the, that are meditative in nature to get to the place where you are focusing to the exclusion of all other things and you can control your perception of time. Hmm. Okay, got it. So in the case, and I've had a similar kind of thing where when I've been in a car accident and I literally have seen everything just the a 20 second moment slow down to feel like almost 30 minutes where you see, <laughs> right. you see the car, we're in the car, it's like, oh my gosh, you're in an accident. <laughs> I see the car ricocheting against the icy road into a guardrail that uh -huh. it feels like we could go over. And, and it's interesting because I remember there, I don't even know why we thought to do this. We were in, in college, but there was some, <laughs> there were the six pack of Coke in the back. <laughs> And when we hit that, when we stopped, we actually swerved and hit the icy, the, there was ice on the ground. We swerved and hit the side of the road, the um, guardrail on the side. Uh -huh. And below that was like a, a, I don't know, 40 foot drop, right? Wow. We're in the mountains. So then I just remember the Coca-Cola, the six pack flying past my head. I just remember it was just feeling so slow and watching. <laughs> and then at that moment thinking, I'm going to die by getting a Coca-Cola can struck <laughs> in my head. This is the worst way of dying. What, what, this is the worst ever. So let me ask you a question. Did you ever feel fear, like abject terror, or were you just sort of amazed by the events? I was amazed by the events. It's, yeah. you know, when you see That's the Godzilla movies, <laughs> when, and you're all like, why aren't those people running? You know, their Godzilla's <laughs> coming along the way, and they're all just, like staring there, just <laughs> transfixed at Godzilla. Well, that, that's, that's focused perception. Radical. You were yeah. in it. You were controlling time. It's a brainwave state, which I think takes over as sort of a gift to us by our brains when we're in grave danger and allows a lot of people. If you descend into fear and you're like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, time will speed up. Mm. But if you get in that place and it's usually by accident, although what the book teaches is how to do it with intention. Because right now, these days, if I drop a wine glass, I can catch it by its stem. Because like you, I will see it in slow motion. I don't descend into fear. I'm in a zone, a flow, which triggers automatically based on practice. And I use this for other aspects of my life so that the holidays and everything else, let's just slow down the field. 
Mm. Let's just make it nice and easy. And there are a lot of ways to do it, tips and techniques and practices so that anyone can do it. Here's what I love about the world. Okay, so I, <laughs> I've been thinking about the following lately. Um, and I think that this is really at the, um, in some ways as a society, everyone also has this time scarcity. I don't have enough time. I'm so busy. Um, I, you know, I don't have, you know, this just this kind of refrain and, and it's like a hypnotic refrain that just gives us, keeps us in a constant state of time scarcity That's right. and um you know we're trying to perform in a certain amount of time and um i have I, and i am a victim of this mindset as well so when i'm coaching you know i only have an hour so i used to have six hours to do it and then these and we're trying and experimenting what happens if i only have an hour and it's like, how can I get six hours of benefit that I've done in the past and have these huge transformations with coaching into one hour? And I think in my mind, I thought, oh, I don't know how to do that. And so when I'm in the sessions, I feel myself rushed to like hit certain times. Or, you know, when you have a PowerPoint and you have a three hours mm -hmm. or an hour to give it and you're trying to deliver on time to make this happen. And so I would love a way to be present, slow down time and have, because during those times, I'm looking at my watch to make sure that this is timed out according to the PowerPoint and we're hitting the, the times that we need. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to accomplish a goal, which is to have impact with my client. And I'm doing it all with less time than I used to. So there's okay. all these kinds of things. So given all the sets of tools that you have, <laughs> what, would you, what would you think would be some helpful ways of thinking about it and tools that I could use? Well, let's, on, let's go back to fear for a moment because okay. the I don't have enough time, I, 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 all of these things, fear rings like the clearest bell out of us, right? If there's, a, if there's a sentient universe that's listening, it's hearing that. And so basically you get what you want, you get what you ask for, you get how you show up. Mm -hmm. So what this book does and these exercises do, well, this, just remove that from the equation. Okay. All those people to the person who had the experiences you had, and I've had many, no one felt fear, even though they were in grave danger. There's a story of a police chief in the book who is in a, a, a gunfight in Los Angeles with slowed down bullets. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't afraid. It was like the matrix. Something mm -hmm. happened in his brain. Mm -hmm. But let's unpack that fear. Do we have time for a quick exercise? Yeah, absolutely. Super fun. Okay, great. So now everyone, let's, we're going to do this. This is both aspirational. It can be used or we're going to go back in time, or we're going to, or we can use it to unpack something that we might be a little concerned about, like you were with the, I don't have enough time. Mm -hmm. All right. So everyone sit comfortably and close your eyes. Let's sit comfortably and do a little, and, and I'll, I'll provide a narrative around meditation and closing eyes, just because it helps people appreciate the biology of it and maybe the science behind it. Just closing our eyes is changing our brain chemistry from serotonin to melatonin. It's a good way to do that. And then we're, well, let's focus on our breath, okay? So a good way to do that, to get in a, a, a state which I call focused perception, inhale a regular inhalation through your nose and exhale through your mouth with the exhaled breath twice as long. And do this again in a regular way, inhaling through your nose Exhaling through your mouth, a long, slow exhalation, twice as long. And inhaling through your nose, exhaling through your mouth. We are triggering our parasympathetic nervous system to relax by breathing in this particular way. Anyone can use this. Inhaling through your nose and exhaling through your mouth. Let's see the number three appear in our mind's eye in front of us in whatever way is perfect for you. People say they can't vision uh, imagery or do visualization. You know, we all daydream. And so seeing the number three in front of our mind's eye, inhale through your nose and out through your mouth. The three dissolves into the number two. We're counting down. Inhaling through your nose, exhale through your mouth. The number two dissolves into the number one. And inhale through your nose and out through your mouth. Number one dissolves into the number zero. We are now in the time of no time. We're focusing to the exclusion of all other things, listening to the sound of my voice, maybe feeling sensations in your body. 
very relaxed. This is a state akin to hypnosis, I've been told, what they call focused awareness. I call it focused perception. So we'll sit for a moment quietly. Now let's bring to mind something that we're afraid won't happen, or if it does happen, it'll turn out badly. So we're going to focus on this, live it as an experience as though it's happening right now. You're living it. It's the show where you don't have enough time. It is not picking up your kids in time so they're standing there. It's not making the plane. It's the mail comes and the check isn't in it. It's you don't get the apartment, you don't get the job, whatever it is. You're living this visceral experience, a movie of this thing happening that you're afraid of. You're afraid it won't turn out well. You're afraid it'll turn out badly. And with every cell of your body, you're sensing it. So you're feeling it and hearing it, sensing it, knowing it. This experience of having this thing happen, you don't want it to happen that way. And so holding that in your mind, now let's do something special. Let's think about all of the ways where if it turned out well, it would be for the benefit of everyone. Let's release a little bit of that fear. Wow, if this all happened, it'd be for the benefit of so many involved. I really want it to happen. I want it to go well. I want the person listening to my coaching to hear it and have enough time. And I want there to be world peace and pick up the kids on time and the check comes and the job is there. So thinking of all the ways this benefits everyone else, and now in this moment, living everything about it, experience the fact that that's not what happened. It didn't turn out that way. It turned out perfectly. You're at the end of your coaching and it was to the moment. The check came, the kids were picked up, you made the flight, you're sitting in your seat. All of the fear suddenly unravels as you relax into the sense that there's nothing more to do. It's done, it's complete. It didn't happen that way. It happened in the way that you wanted to. For a moment, you can dwell on all the wonderful things, the benefits that it has for so many others involved that it happened that way. The person you're coaching, the other person, the person who's selling the house, the kids being picked up, you're on the plane on time, you make the meeting. This wonderful ballet, we'll call it, going through your life. Now again, taking that into our bodies, let's Imagine that every cell in our body is complete in the fact that there's nothing more to do. It, the thing didn't happen. It didn't happen that way. It's done. It's complete. It's finished. Every cell of our body is vibrating with this and take it out to the bottom of your feet into the entire earth, filling up the earth and all of the cells on the earth with this feeling there is nothing more to do. It's complete. It's finished. It's over. It's done. And it happened exactly the way you wanted coming back up through your feet from the earth, having filled up the earth and all the way up your spine, out the top of your head and in every direction at the same time, moving up and up this expansive nature through the buildings we're in and through the solar system and the galaxy and the universe, all the way up as high as you can go and then just let it go. Let's feel our body resting, we're resting in the calmness of nothing more to do. It's perfect, it's complete. When we're ready, we can open our eyes. And I, I have a question based on that exercise, because you had said earlier that we could actually be thinking about um, future and what you were doing. We could. We, we could, could also substitute be, something in the future. Yeah, or in the past. Yes. Um, we could do another we, one where we unpack the past, if you like. Yeah, let's do that. I just want to see, I want to hear the differences in what you did so that we can maybe do yeah, let's do the past and then the future. I just want to hear awesome. what it sounds like. Good. Okay, great. So now we're going to do an exercise, which I call <coughs> reversing the past, right? Mm -hmm. We're all pretty comfortable, but let's imagine that we're going to sit comfortably again and slowly close our eyes. And this focus perception, this breathing exercise is very powerful. People talk about meditation. They're a little concerned about it. The difference is you can get in a quick meditative state if you use these techniques. And I'm a 30-year meditator, so I've done it both ways but breathing in through our nose, now relaxed, a regular inhalation out through our mouth, twice as long, in through your nose and out through your mouth, a long, slow exhalation, seeing the breath leave your mouth as white smoke, it's wonderful. In through your nose and out through your mouth, long, slow exhalation, again, seeing the number three appear in your mind's eye, we're gonna count down. In through our nose and out through our mouth, 
the number three dissolves into the number two. We know where we're going to the time of no time. In through your nose and out through your mouth, the number two dissolving into the number one. And the number breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth, and the number one dissolving to the number zero. We're again in the time of no time. This wonderful place, that term came from my, my spiritual teacher, Dr. Jerry Epstein in New York, who was such a great uh, imagery teacher. In this time of no time, we're gonna sit comfortably. And as we did before, we're gonna go in our mind, in our imagination, live an experience of something that happened in the past that was traumatic, something we'd like to be different. Very often it could be a childhood experience or it could be a conversation that just went badly. I use this all the time during my day. Living this experience, bring to mind this experience that you've had and the person in it or whatever happened. And you're living the experience again, viscerally. You're seeing it, feeling it, hearing it, sensing it, all of the sensations of living this experience. This thing that happened in the past that you'd really like to be different. And keeping that in your mind, we can also introduce all of the ways, again, I do this often, about all of the ways where if it were different, it would benefit others. I'm often asked why I do this. And the reason is it eliminates fear that it won't happen. It eliminates fear that it won't be removed. We want from our hearts in this wonderful way. And if the universe is listening, it loves it too. The fact that we want so many things, goodness for other people. So living this experience, you're going right up to the moment in this experience where this thing happened. Having the conversation up until the point where it turns badly, up until the argument, up until the auto accident, up until you might have struck someone, someone struck you, a horrible trauma. Living the experience, all of that that happens, and now something we could do, especially if it's an experience where you were a child, see yourself as an adult coming to your own aid see someone coming into the picture. And when they come into the picture and it could be an adult you, it doesn't happen that way. You're not struck. The argument doesn't happen. The auto accident doesn't happen. You're saved, you're rescued. It didn't happen that way. You didn't go into the guardrail. The words weren't said to you or you didn't say them. Reverse them in any way. I use this adult coming back into our lives quite often for child trauma. But if you're an adult and this happened to you, live the experience of it simply didn't happen. The conversation didn't happen. Just like we did a moment ago, a thing we're afraid of, reverse it where you didn't say those words. The hand didn't strike you. You didn't strike another. The car didn't strike the guardrail. You didn't miss the plane. The check did come. Anything you want to reverse, living the complete experience of it, and now because our bodies are so important, our memory, our cellular memory, let's again expand this to every cell of our body. The fact that this is reversed, it didn't happen. Every cell of our body filling up with this reversing of the past and going down again through our feet into the earth, filling up every cell of the earth, this feeling, living the experience of that's not what happened. We've reversed it. We've changed the ending. We're in a movie starring us, completely filling the earth and all the cells in it, coming back up through our feet and up through our spinal cord and again out through the top of our head, out through the buildings we're in and into the galaxy and the solar system and the universe and up and up and up. And then we just always let it go. Don't dwell. Feel your body resting in the calmness. Again, there's nothing more to do. It didn't happen that way. When we're ready, we can slowly close our eyes. Open or close our eyes? Open our eyes, right? Slowly open our eyes. Pardon open our eyes. Okay. I was I was in the zone. <laughs> okay. Let's stay. Let's stay with our eyes closed. I'm somewhere else after two okay. of these right in a row. So let's for a moment before we do something else talk about the time aspect of that. Mm -hmm. The book explores this question: Does how we show up in our minds again? affect our experience of reality and in particular our experience of time. Quantum mechanics on which the book is based would say that it does. It's the observer effect. Mm -hmm. So we might call this the observer effect for humans. Mm -hmm. 
right? We are now going to show up to two situations. One situation that we're afraid of, mm -hmm. completely different. How are we different? We live the experience of that didn't happen. It didn't happen that way. And with the past, it's a little bit nuanced. And in this way, people say, well, just because you imagine it happening differently, does that mean that you change the past? Well, in quantum mechanics, actually, the present can change the past and the future can change the present, I'm just saying. But with this, what we're changing is the charge. We're changing our emotional, we're changing how we're showing up to the next moment, having lived an experience where we've released the emotion, we've released the charge around the trauma of what happened to us. Now for very deep trauma, should this be used? No, of course not. For clinical, for clinical situations where people have been greatly harmed, this can be a tool along with a lot of other tools. But for most people, the traumas of our lives, the bad conversation, I once struck my cat, Spanky. Mm -hmm. I was heartbroken. He had a tumor and I didn't know it. And he was uh... not able to keep himself in the litter box. And I'd lost it at three o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I just was so heartbroken. And the way he looked at me, I couldn't live with myself. I mm -hmm. used this to reverse it. Did it reverse the first time? No, I was so heartbroken. I had to do this three, four or five times. Mm -hmm. But eventually, I let go of the charge of that. And he didn't look at me that way anymore. Because mm -hmm. how I was showing up to him was different. That's the key. While others may remember things, we're the one who remembers most of the things and all of the things that happen to us. We are changing the part of the equation we can control our perception mm, with these okay. simple exercises. And that's how it relates to time. Mm, I love it. And so I, you know, I was, I, as, I was, as I've done work like this, where you go back and, and you go back into your past, into your childhood, and you change you can't necessarily change the event that happened but you can change and bring a higher version of yourself to come and operate and redo right. the event the way that you always wanted it to be so that in a lot of ways it's similar to the process that you use um, the process that you is far more simple because you could just pretend it didn't happen the way because you know if you go back to a lot of um, I think it's Buddhist and perceptions and how our perceptions occur is that things happen. We then lock it into our subconscious and our memory banks. It's like, this will always happen this way. Mm -hmm. And then we don't open up and see a 360 degree view. We have a, 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 a view that is um, biased by our our experiences. So right. we don't necessarily see the full picture anymore because I know the next time that, you know, I'm in a car and there's Coca-Cola in the back, I'm not going to <laughs> gonna remove that and put it on the ground. That's actually a good thing. Probably would have been thing. a smart thing to do to begin with. Right. But, you know, but, but there are other ways in which those perception, those experiences that happen actually shape me to be less open. So, yes, you know, uh, yeah. And so that's where the showing those, up in the moment matters. Yeah. Showing up in the moment matters and to kind of wait a second, you're safe at this moment, CJ, you're safe. And let's pretend all these catastrophizing things that you're thinking about will not happen. So if we take the example that I brought in, okay, you can accomplish a miracle. You can accomplish let's take away the constraint that you have in your mind based on your experience of coaching six sessions and having miracle breakthroughs. Mm -hmm. Let's take away that belief that six sessions equal miracle breakthrough. Let's just say that's not true. That didn't, you know, take away that fear. And then let's see what happens. Like there could be a miracle, you know, th it's possible for me. Let's be open to that possibility so that I show up differently when I'm showing up for that session going, oh gosh, how am I going to do one session? <laughs> I have the same equivalent of six. So I definitely see that in the first example. Well, I, I use them in tandem. And so, so for me in a practice, I yeah. will, I will pick the thing and I will reverse it right at yes. the end of my day. And in fact, during the day, I will, I will write down and or otherwise remember so that in my evening meditation, I reverse it. Mm. It did not happen that way. 
or I neutralize it if it's a fear that hasn't happened yet. So that's how I start. And then in the very early wee hours of the morning, we can do it. I'll, I'll share another exercise with you, which is the aspirational exercise of how it did turn out. Ah, okay. And the two together are extremely powerful. You've neutralized the fear, you reverse it, and now you're living its perfect version of itself. Yeah. Wow. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really then the powerful. higher self is really, really going to take wake up and say, oh my gosh, I have instructions. I know what to do. And so not only are you different, your high, the higher self has instructions, your lower self is not afraid. You've mm -hmm. neutralized all aspects of it and you can truly live your life. I call it the quantum ballet. Mm -hmm. You're doing what you're doing and I'm doing what I'm doing. And it seems chaotic, but truly it's incredibly orchestrated mm -hmm. by all of our hopes and desires. Mm, yeah. Okay. So let's go to the future and see how awesome. that works. Okay. Great. It's actually really powerful to do. I think all these in combination because generally it they're related, right? It's what related. you had some kind of past experience that wasn't great. So let's do a redo on that. You're pre-anticipating some awful things. So let's stop th doing that. And now we're going into the future and pre-anticipating, I think, a positive future. But let's see what happens. I'll right. close okay. my eyes Wonderful. And, and be so, glad. <laughs> so this is the trifecta. This is the third of three. Mm -hmm. Again, closing our eyes, relaxing. And we're in a pretty relaxed state. I would imagine people are generating some pretty good theta waves right now for meditation. Closing our eyes. And we know what to do to go to, to, into focus perception. It's always the same. Breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth with the exhale twice as long as your inhale. And in through your nose and out through your mouth. Again, long, slow exhalation out of your mouth. Okay. And in through your nose and out through your mouth. A long, slow exhalation, seeing the air leave as white smoke. In through your nose and out through your mouth, seeing the number three appear in your mind's eye in whatever way is wonderful for you, it's there. And through your nose and out through your mouth, the number three dissolving into the number two. And then through your nose and out through your mouth, the number two dissolving into the number one. And then through your nose and out through your mouth, number one dissolving into the number zero. We're in this place, we're in the now, to the exclusion of all other things we can suggest to ourselves. And now we'll have some fun. So sitting quietly for a moment, Bring to mind something you would really like to have happen, something fulfilling and satisfying. It could be mundane as the check coming or the chick or your children getting into the soccer team or making the plane. It could be profound, such as world peace. I think about peace in the United States all the time, and I've used it for this. Some wonderful event that you want to have happen. It could be related to what we've just reversed and what we've just uh, eliminated the fear of. Living the experience of something you want to have happen fulfilling, wonderful, satisfying, again, a visceral movie. So we're see, feel, hear, sense, and know this is happening around you, this wonderful thing that you would like to have happen. And now, as we always do, think about all the ways that it benefits others. All of the benefit that would come to so many involved if it happened this way. The benefit of many, maybe everyone in the world. This wonderful benefit to the detriment of none and the benefit of everyone, you're thinking about this wonderful thing that you would like to have happen. And holding that, sitting quietly, living the movie, and now, as we often do, it just happened. Live the experience, there's nothing more to do, not one more thing. It's done, it's finished, it's complete. Wow, it happened just like you thought. The check came, you made the plane, the kids are in soccer, there's world peace whatever there is that you want to have happen, thinking about this, feeling it now, as our brains often do, it's going to start to unpack. Well, how did that happen? What are the details? Who cares about the details? They're not your department. Who, what, when, where, why, how, forget all that. Just live the experience. There's nothing more to do. It's done. It's finished. It's complete. You're complete. And now, as we often do, let's take this into our body, right? Every cell of our body vibrating with the feeling there's nothing more to do, done, finished, complete, perfect, perfection. Every cell of our body is vibrating down through your feet, again, out through the earth, filling up the earth, all of the earth, the cells of the earth with the same feeling of completeness, fulfillment, nothing more to do. All of the earth is vibrating and it comes back up your feet and up through your spine and again, out the top of your head, 
going higher and higher and higher in every direction through the building and the solar system and the galaxy and all the way to the center of the universe, it's even higher and then just let it go. And feel your body resting in the calmness of nothing more to do. Mm. And when we're ready, slowly open your eyes. That's interesting. It's very, um, there's, there's a kinship to, um, or, uh, to manifesting and a lot of the yes. things that you're trying to, so this has this, it has, I feel like I'm, 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 you know, when you, you have a fine wine and you're smelling like, oh, there's hints of blackberry, <laughs> yeah, like, oh, it smells like chocolate, you know, and so when I was flavoring your beautiful wine, it feels a bit of manifestation, it, it feels in Buddhism, it's about planting seeds as one mm -hmm. idea that they have, it's like NLP, and then it's reversing some of mm -hmm. the trauma associated with that. You can release some of the things that have happened. Um, but what I like about it, and that's different than all three of those things, is it's very simple. It's the same process each time mm -hmm. in the sense that the um, beginning process is very similar, what, regardless of what sure. three directions we went. The intention is is slightly different the first one being just rest in a place of knowing everything is fine mm -hmm. don't go into fear flight five fear you know survival mechanisms just assume everything is going to be okay so when you're in the whatever it is that you're about to do starting my coaching session there's not a fear that i don't have enough time and for the sessions that i did and then pass the worry about them. Just take away the worry. Everything worked out exactly as you needed to. So you're doing a redo so that I can come and relate to all future sessions that I do with <laughs> the clients that I haven't hit in a different way. Right. And uh, the, I think the future one just felt like I was planting seeds of manifestation, like trying sure. to materialize something. That's at least my experience of it. But well, in a sense, all so everything we do is manifestation. Our desires yeah. are manifesting things around. But what I think of it as, and that is all personal transformation is rooted in time, in mm -hmm. some sense. We, you know, we're either afraid of the past, can't stay or the now, can't stay in the now, or you know, or, or living in the future or afraid of the future. Mm -hmm. One thing or another is holding us back. Mm -hmm. So this brings us to the present. It neutralizes all of the fears that are time-related, right? Both back, future fears and past traumas, et cetera, mm -hmm. to bring us into the present so that how we can show up in every moment is how we want to show up. That's the key. Mm -hmm. That's why mm -hmm. personal transformation is time-bound. Mm -hmm. In a sense, it's all about time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The thing we know the least about, and it's the most important. How ironic is that, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had just a couple of questions. So I, we, we talked about um, when, before the show, we were talking about different cultures and their relationship to time. And I was um, explaining that when I was in India and in um, Italy, there's just a sense of relax. Like I'll get there when I get there. So it's like, Hey, show up for lunch. You don't say show up at lunch at 12 and you think I'm going to be there at 12. You show up for lunch when you're hungry. Hawaii has this too. And then you just mm -hmm. kind of like flow from there. <laughs> um, it's a very different kind of place than um, the linear time when I went to Germany um, or in Shanghai, where that's my background, where you get someplace and you're supposed to be there on the dot. And if you're not on, there on the dot, the train leaves. Like it's, if it's <laughs> the train is supposed to get there at 12. It's 12, you know, oh one, and your foot is about to like, you know, <laughs> it's, a bar cut. it's like, it's gone. It's 12 oh one. I'm gone. So well, that's just... a different way, but you, you, you lit on this. And that is time is a linear construct that we made up for this plane of existence. Yeah. You can go to another plane. This, the societies that you're talking about where it's, you know, uh, you know, La, La Dolce Vida and people show up when they show up, that is a different plane of existence mm -hmm. from the time-bound material world that we become enslaved to. 
You know, yeah. when people say I'm so busy, I'm so busy, I'm so busy, that is, that's slavery in a sense. We're mm -hmm. slave to time and we're doing it to ourselves. I'm not so busy. I have all the time in the world. I'm thinking about slowing down my life. I use the experience, the, the meditation that we just did to live my entire day in advance every day. Mm. Before I wake up, my eyes, and this is in the book, I wake up and I'm still in bed in that dreamy state, right? It's still dark and I haven't moved or turned on any lights. And I remember to do this. And how I remember is I keep crystals in bed with me. And if you touch a crystal, you roll on it, right? You're going to remember something. So it's like a talisman or a totem even. Wow. Right from Native America. So, you know, a piece of uh, rose quartz or something. Yeah. I roll on it and I remember, oh, I'm going to live my day in advance. I live it like a ballet in the way we exact, we just did. Mm. All through my day, I'm going from this on this wonderful interview. And this was so great. And then I'm going to do this and that. And oh, the check comes and there's world peace and everything's wonderful. And I get to the end of the day in my meditation before I've gotten up and I actually get into bed and I close my eyes and that was my whole day. Mm. And then I get up and I don't think another thought about it. But you know what, CJ, you know what happens? A lot of what I just thought happens. It mm. happens in my day. Mm. Now, I, after 30 years, I expect it. Wow. Not, the day is like, oh, yeah, look, the check came. We got the grant. All these things happen. There's world peace. All of these things happen. And I'm like, wow, isn't that great? Just like the yeah. ballet. And then you yeah. get up and do it again. And then in the evening, you can do the reversing. I do that before my evening meditation. So I reverse things or I neutralize a fear that I might have. Mm. And the cycle puts you in a different plane of existence. Mm. It's not a la la woo woo plane where nothing happens. You have to deal with the chiropractor and the plane taking off and, you know, needing to pay the bill and this and that, but there's a different way to live. Mm. There's a way that's expansive and fulfilling and meaningful and not time bound. Mm -hmm. We can all do this. And I often say the book was written before and during the pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. And what happened? People's relationship to time totally decimated right from the I'm so busy, I'm so busy to the wow, that year was one long day. What year is it? <laughs> it's Groundhog Day. Yeah. No one knows what day it is or what time it is because yeah. we stop moving around. So before we get back to business and usual, as usual, master time. Mm -hmm. You don't have to get back on that treadmill. Mm -hmm. You can live the ballet. And it doesn't mean that things don't happen and you don't miss the this or the that or whatever happens. But that way you show up is different. Mm. And it's mm -hmm. allowing for the slowing down of the field of your life for greater meaning and fulfillment. Mm. As I often say, to lead your best possible life. Doesn't everybody want that? Yeah. Yeah, we do. And we want it for others too. Yeah. And so here you are living, you've lived your life like this, you know, since you're a little girl and you've refined your understanding of this and have developed techniques to master this. I mean, how, so you talked about a little bit about how your day is different. You know, you wake up in the morning and you touch your crystals and you, and, and then in the end of the day, you've manifested what you're hoping. How does it make, how does your life different as a result of this? Well, it is so it, it's like the ballet. So you could sit in a ballet and you're in the audience and you're watching the ballet of your life. And you're also on the stage. People are maybe bumping into you and it seems a little chaotic, but it's not. There's a wonderful flow to it. All ballets have that. That's why I use the phrase quantum ballet, because mm. in some sense, we're manifesting quantum mechanics is everywhere in our lives. We may not think about it, but it's the reason we have these computers. It's in lasers. It's in every aspect of our life. We can't see it or control it yet, but we will. And I do believe it's what's going on that allows us to do these many things. And we mm. will discover that. Yeah. So with that shift in perception, the time is truly unlimited. I can get to where I want to go. Again, when I drop the wine glass, I'll catch it by the stem. You know, the, the milk comes off the counter and instead of descending into fear, you can catch it. Mm -hmm. You can make the train. You can, and also if you do this ahead of time and some people who are involved in time management might say, oh, that's a cop out. But if you're so focused on this aspect of time, you won't be late. Mm. You won't, it's been removed from the equation. All the fear that you'll be late will be gone. You can use this while driving, right? You can use this while getting to appointments, but you've thought about it ahead of time. Back to the theory, you know, the question in the book, does how we show up in our minds affect our experience of reality? And the answer is yes, in every aspect. Mm. 
-hmm. The real question is how do we put it into practice? And that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. So are you finding life is more um, going expected as planned or is there still magic and and openness and delight for how life just springs up something that you're not (laughs) expecting? So my practice is at th- between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. every morning for decades, I do the, ex- the uh, exercise we just did, mm-hmm. my heart's desire. And boy, when you're, when you're in that state in Buddhism, it's that you know, you're having dreams of the void then, mm-hmm. right? You're through of dreams of karma. You're, you're done with your day. And now you have this wonderful time. In Kabbalah, that's the time of the prophets, mm-hmm. right? In India, a very special time, 3 a.m. So between 3 and 5 a.m., I'll wake up because I roll on the crystal. And I'll do this exercise and it, it could be mundane, like, you know, the grant comes or the check comes, or we have a great conversation. It could be my heart's desire. The thing that I would be afraid to even utter, I am now living this experience. And that is the yeah. magic of life. If you remember to do that, and I do three, four, five of them in a row where I have a device, an MP3 player in bed with me and I listen to the exercise where I bring myself through it. Mm-hmm. And again, this exercise is on the website if people want to download it and put it on a device and yeah, listen to it. So it's on it. allthetimebook.com? Allthetimebook.com, just go to bonuses, right? Yeah. Download the exercise, listen to this and dream your heart's desire. Mm. You could want to meet someone. You could want to start a company or a nonprofit. You could want to be recognized. You know, honestly, you could, I'd love to, to be involved in world peace in ways that seem unimaginable but you know what when you're living that it's not unimaginable because we are imagining it Mm. and then as we always do we set it aside you know don't dwell we don't need to dwell if we dwell then fear comes up right our brain kicks in it starts to think oh my gosh this won't happen how do you do this that's not your department you've told your big eye right that which is you this overarching this wonderful spiritual God-like being that it, I believe is in all of us, mm-hmm. instructions about your heart's desire, and then you just fell asleep. Good. <laughs> yeah, so it's almost, you know, I think that one of the things that I've noticed and why there is probably a big resignation is we've lost track of our actual big dreams. And so now when we've had this time by ourselves tuning in we realize i don't even know what my big dream is or i know what my big dream is and it's not what i'm doing right now and and because i coach people who say i don't even know what it should be but i know it's not this um and i like how you're using that three to five a.m magic that's when all the buddhists uh, every and anyone in a spiritual practice that's the time when the um um uh, what is that uh in this, the third eye area is uh, uh, this this part of your body that is wired to the divine, that right. big eye. I can't remember the name of it, but um, that's when that's mo- most on fire, which is, I think, why everyone focuses on that time. Sure. And um, so live your big dreams then. Yeah. Number one. And the, and yeah. All, there's also something else that's in the book, and that is you could ask your question, what is it that's mine to do? Yeah. And just listen to the answers Yeah. during that time with this wonderful, po- the possibility of dreaming as big as possible. And what is it that's yours to do? It could be something so profound. You wouldn't even want to imagine it in the daytime hours, but you know what? <laughs> You're living it now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Tell me as we wrap up, is there anything that you want to share with us about the kind of stuff that you do with your nonprofit police to peace and And tell me a little bit about that. I would love to, because in fact, that came out of this work. Mm -hmm. And that was, I had been, I've I've been a technology executive and working with small businesses for my whole life, 30 plus years. And I started to get around the age of 50. And I thought to myself, there must be something more. And in fact, right around that time, 2014, the Dalai Lama was quoted as saying, paraphrased, you know, women basically will change the world, women over 50. For the reason that, you know, with education and with desire, and plus we're the weavers, we're weaving society back together, not to be so gender specific, but we're, you know, as gatherers rather than hunters, we're out there weaving things together. And it started to happen to me. And I was working with a company in Florida, and I had an experience. And the experience was I saw a police vehicle enter a beach on a summer day in Florida, and I was on the beach with children playing in the waves. 
And this vision happened to me where I saw the words police on the police vehicle turn into the word peace officer. Mm. And I thought to myself, well, that's notable. What just happened? It was one of those mystical experiences. It was in broad daylight. Was it, quote, really there? Yeah, it was really there for me. And so I thought about that, but I had been doing this work and this book was in process at the time, many, mm. many years ago. And I thought to myself, what is it that's mine to do? Mm. Wow. And also there's a famous quote from a rabbi, if not me, who, if not now, when? Mm -hmm. So these questions were weighing on me because of the nature of this book, mm. because asking the question, here's the real, here's the real question. If you didn't care what it was yours to do now, would you care what time it was? No. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I wouldn't care what time it is if you didn't have to do something now. Mm -hmm. So there's a bigger spiritual question. What is it that's mine to do mm -hmm. now in my life? That big mm -hmm. dream. And I decided to look into this. And I realized that introducing the word peace and peace officer into communities with policing conflicts and with consternation and with harm and with, you know, missed expectations and broken expectations on both sides could be a healing technology that was transformational and it was mm. and so four years later we're doing this around the country we're in some cities which are torn apart by violence which are very well known mm. we're using this ability to connect with oneself and by me asking myself the question what is it that's mine to do i was able to envision this big dream the mm. big dream of peaceful policing in america now that's a big dream Mm, and also there's a funny way of thinking of it and that is you know police to peace is multi-dimensional in some ways it's doing things on a lot of levels and plus time travel would help right and so <laughs> <laughs> exactly if you could erase let's do things. some time travel right with our yeah. policing and get back to peaceful communities mm. with policing with people who are serving and protecting us with their hearts first mm. and and that is the nature of the work Lovely. And so if people want to find out more about Police to Peace, is that something that you can go to all the time book.com or is that someplace sure. else? Well, yeah. you could Google police, the number two in the word peace. We're all over the internet, police to yeah. peace. In fact, even some version of that, I'm sure you'll find us. And then uh, for my website, lisabroderick.com, you could Google my name and also all the time book. And I'm sure you'll be able to find me on all the social media channels and with bonuses and helping people out. Excellent. Thank you so much for being on the show. DJ, it has been a blast. Thank you.